Impressive. That is Dubai in one word. This is where you will find the world famous tallest building in the world, the Burj Khalifa, the largest shopping center in the world, the Dubai Mall, an iconic construction project such as the Palm Jumeirah and Burj Al Arab. Even your arrival is impressive. More than 80 million passengers arrive at Dubai Airport every year. Nowhere in the world is the number higher. In Welcome to Dubai, we ask four social influencers from Dubai to describe their city. To me, Dubai is the best of East meets West. Dubai is awesome. In one word, I think I'd describe Dubai as very inspiring. There is just this sense of optimism and a bit of sunshine always helps that. What started as a small fishing town more than 40 years ago is now a metropolis with almost 3 million residents. A place that is alive where so much is happening. A city made up of many neighborhoods with very different characters. I think for very long the Jumeirah area has been quite underrated. And now that we've got all of these cool new social spots like Box Park, Galleria, uh, City Walk and Al Wassel Square, I think now this area is the place to be. I think one of the great things about Jumeirah is that no matter where you are, you have the sea on one side and on the other side you have a view of all the sky rises. They've always got something happening at the beach. So it's never, like I said earlier, it's never a dull moment here. It's one of those places that I take people to every single time because it gives you an alternative view, an alternative opinion of the city. One of the reasons why I love Box Park is because they've used containers and converted that into stores. You can definitely catch me at Box Park. It's the place I go for coffee. One of my favorite places is Gossip Desserts, which is a homegrown brand in the region. Box Park is a very modern and new idea and it uh, fits our concept very well because it's an urban lifestyle at the same time it's localized in a traditional area. I go to Box Park because I want to buy a pair of trainers and I come away from Box Park having had the best mozzarella I've ever had. The place is really inspired by I'd say like maybe London or New York. It's very urban, very arty uh, and just a really cool place to hang out. Well, Jumeirah area has some of the cutest little boutique stores, you know, from high-end designers like, you know, Karl Lagerfeld, Tory Burch, to some really up-and-coming designers. City Walk is sort of like a city within a city. They have some great shops there. One of my favorites is uh, Concepts. Uh, you know, I'm a sneakerhead myself. I love sneakers. City Walk, you know, enjoys our little unique concept. There's nowhere in the rest of Dubai that does Coco Cuisine. When we decided to be in Dubai, we wanted to be in a unique uh, location. So we chose City Walk. It was brand new, it was contemporary, it was dynamic. You've got Hub Zero, which is great. That's great entertainment, that's pure entertainment. You've got Green Planet, which is edutainment, because you are getting answers, you're learning, and uh, the kids found it fascinating. Every hour, uh, they have a laser, water, and smoke show right in the middle of City Walk. Dubai is known for their great local beaches, and there's loads of them down on the Al Safua Strip, the Beach Road Strip. But if you really want something a little bit more high end, a little bit more luxury, I'd suggest popping in at Nikki Beach, Dubai. You'll feel like you're in Miami. A lot of people here, we do weekend staycations, and this is a fantastic place for it. It's a combination of 15 private villas, a spa, resort, a beach club, and also a hotel, and Nikki Beach residences also. It's a luxury beach club. It combines music, fashion, art, food, and it's one of the hot spots in Dubai any day of the week that you go there. The great part about Nikki Beach is not only do they bring great DJs every weekend from around the world, but it's everything from casual dining to a party. So you can make it what you want and pretty much spend the weekend there. It's guaranteed a great time. That's why it's really difficult to leave Nikki Beach because it's a full-on destination on its own. Dubai is an all-year-round destination to visit with many events happening. 
shopping and food festivals, concerts, sporting events, and many more. For helpful information, go to the Visit Dubai website or mobile app. Here you will find a calendar of all that's taken place and you will see that there is something for everyone. I think a lot of people come here without realizing that there is hundreds of years of history and tradition to the city from the pearl fishing, from the trading, from the spice and the souk routes. Uh, you can see it in person in the historical district. The area is based around Bird Dubai and Deira. On the Deira side, you have the spice souk, you have the gold souk, and on the uh, Bird Dubai side, you have uh, the Al Fahidi uh, port. Uh, you also have some of the bazaars and souks over there. I think this area does a fantastic job in raising awareness around Dubai's culture. It shows you what life was really like 50, 60 years ago, where there was trade down at the harbour. And I think, you know, it's a nice contrast. Dubai isn't only glitz and glam, there's also a lot of realness to it. One thing I love about Deira is that it still resembles what Dubai used to be like when it started. You know, the creek uh, with all the uh, boats over there and trade that's still going on. These boats are still coming from different places around the world. Well, Deira is one of the oldest areas in Dubai and it's a must to take your visitors there. Make sure you show them that side too. You know, there's the nut and spice soup, textiles and gold souk as well. Pop them on an Abra, it only costs you one dirham, it's so cheap, and you can literally sail from souk to souk. What makes uh, Shindara so special is uh, it's still got some of the houses that used to exist in Dubai before. So you'll see the houses covered in coral and they have the wind towers and these wind towers were used to keep the house cool. We live in a hot environment for the majority of the year, so the wind tunnel, uh, what it does is it attracts the cool air, brings it down and holds the cool air at the bottom. That's traditional air conditioning. Al Bastakia is definitely an area to check out. It's so traditional and it's a walking path, so there's lots of stores for buying traditional arts and crafts, local galleries and really sweet cafes. A place to see is the Dubai Museum, which is located at the Al Fahidi Fort. Inside the Dubai Museum, you'll find every little piece of history that makes up what Dubai is. And Dubai is based on pearl diving, uh, so you'll find some uh, great stories about uh, the pearl divers there too. The best way I'd recommend visiting is the Al Fahadi walking tour. I think it's so nice with the pebble stones and it makes the perfect picture. If you enjoy history, the modern Etihad Museum is certainly worth a visit. In this futuristic building, you will find everything there is to know about the rich history of Dubai and the establishment of the United Arab Emirates. So many people have this stereotype in the mind of Dubai as this very modern, futuristic city, and they get involved in that. And they don't realize that there is so much on offer outside the city limits. You know, a lot of people don't realize that there are huge cycling tracks uh, out of the city to the, the Al Qudra cycling track, which takes you down to uh, Dubai International Endurance City, which is a real hub for equestrian sports. But equally, you know, take the family, have a, have a picnic around the Al Qudra lakes that attracts water birds and waders from around the world. A unique element of the city. So if you take about a 40 to 45 minute drive just outside of Dubai, you'll end up in an area called Dubai Desert Conservation Reserve. It's, I think, over 225 kilometers of just pristine desert land. What you'll find there is a beautiful Bedouin campsite set up by Emiratis themselves. And it really gives you a sort of a taste of what life was like for the Bedouins 50, 60 years ago. You'll see a lot of wildlife from falcons, gazelles, the Arabian cats, um, which are quite special. Um, and I promise you, you'll see the best sunset in the desert. You haven't tried a desert safari until you've teamed up with Platinum Heritage. They've got a really nice combination of heritage that's rich in culture of the UAE, but then also something a little bit more luxurious, a little bit more opulent. 
We start the journey off in the 1950s Land Rovers. These were the cars bought here by the British. After the British left, they left the vehicles behind and this opened up the whole country for the, the local Bedouins. They would use these cars to go from place to place, from village to village. I think one of the most beautiful things about the desert is that anytime you go there, it looks like somebody painted a picture for you um, because the wind blows the sand. So even if you're taking steps after a while, it just clears up. Once we come back to the camp that you can see here, uh, we display all of the Emirati traditions. We have camel meat for people to try. And we also have displays of entertainment like Haliji. This is a female dance. And we have the Yola performance, the guys swinging the guns in unison, dancing, showing off their masculinity to the tribe. Meet the locals and ask them about the background of this part of the world, because that will give you a unique perspective, not just on Dubai, but on the region as a whole. Ballooning is the real and true adventure. It's the definition of an adventure because you start on a journey and you never know where you end up and whom you will meet on landing. The hot air balloon is just a must see. You have to wake up a little bit early, I must say, but it's worth it to see the sun rise across the desert. You're 3,000 feet up, it's picturesque. Falcons are one of the symbols of the United Arab Emirates and we combined a balloon experience over the desert with the falcons. It's crazy. I mean, this is a, this is a falcon, you know, a, a creature from the wild. So you can fly with falcons and get a bird's eye view with the birds. So you see one of the great traditions and heritages of this part of the world while seeing it from a new perspective. I mean, why would you not want to do that? As anything else can be luxurious, the desert can also be luxurious because you can experience the desert in a luxurious way with platinum heritage. To the people who want to experience the desert, but in a style. And this is why we use a luxury Range Rover to pick you up from the hotel. As you're taking a cruise around the desert, one of your pit stops is at the lake itself, where you'll find all sorts of local Arabian wildlife and also exotic birds. And we have a chef on site who offer the six course, a la carte menu, where you can uh, get to choose if you want to have your anger beef steak or your salmon and, and tiger prawns. If you're a foodie, then definitely you're in good hands because they can organize anything for you from caviar to steaks. But the great part about Platinum Heritage is that they customize the packages, so it's really affordable luxury and it can be the experience you want it to be. Looking to discover the best of Dubai and get tips on what to do, see and try? Insido.com provides you with top recommendations for just about everything. Whatever you're looking for, restaurants, shopping, family activities, or even desert sports, you'll find it on Insido, your undercover city guide. I've traveled all the world, and every time I go to downtown Dubai, I really feel like this is a unique place. I mean, all of downtown Dubai is the base of the world's tallest building, first of all. If you want to shop in downtown Dubai, the only place you need to be is Dubai Mall. With over 1,200 stores from all the top luxury brands around the world, I promise you won't leave empty-handed. And what's interesting is that they always tied in with all of the nationalities here. You know, if anyone's celebrating a day, you'll find the national flag being put up on the Burj Khalifa in, in multiple LED lights, which is amazing. There's also the Dubai Fountain, which is a must-see. Grab yourself a little table either in Sukh al-Bahar or Dubai Mall, and you can enjoy your meal while watching the Dubai Fountain Show. And they have the largest aquarium in the world. If, uh, if you're up for diving with sharks in the mall and that's your thing, you could do that as well. Well, I am so excited that we finally have Dubai Opera. And not only do they showcase loads of different you know, performances, but they also showcase some of the biggest musicals in town. They built this thing, an iconic architectural standing within two years. They've taken the advice of all the great producers and directors of shows and built to spec for that. The acoustics were extraordinary, the facilities were extraordinary, interiors, exteriors. Um, it is a very, very moot investment and one that's much talked about. 
If you're visiting Dubai, check the calendar for what's showing at Dubai Opera. It has everything from probably the best musical artists performing, ballet, Broadway shows. It's definitely something to check out and it promises you a gorgeous night. Public transport is highly efficient and safe in Dubai. It's convenient to use a null card. You can buy this prepaid chip card at every metro, tram and bus station. Only looking to use public transport for one day? Purchase a red null card to travel safely and comfortably all day long without limitations. Well, I think Business Bay is great for, you know, the diversity. It's got such a nice mix of, of different types of lifestyles. You've got commercial, residential, but in my opinion, you've also got the best hotel apartment accommodation and also great Airbnbs. There is retail, there's food and beverage, there's parks, there's entertainment, there's playgrounds, all the way uh, along the, the, the banks of the canals. And it has so much potential as well. It's one of those areas of growth. Business Bay also hosts a farmer's market, and there you can find all locally sourced organic fruits and vegetables. So it's always nice to pop in there and get your local produce for the week. And some of the best nightclubs in Dubai are also starting to come up in Business Bay. So it's really becoming uh, a place for everyone to either live, uh, work, or go out to dinner, or even go out at night to party. I love Bay Square, it has this kind of young feeling of work life meets residential. There's great modern developments there. So you can walk around, I get my nails done there, I grab my lunch, which is at Circle Cafe. It's quite a nice area to just work and feel and there's a little elements of sports, so it's a really community feel. We have people coming from the offices who work here and then we have residents as well. And they literally have everything here. So they have a yoga studio, they have, I mean, you, you've seen the restaurants around, they're absolutely beautiful. You've got the pantry, you've got book munch, you've got all these beautiful juices you can get. We have everything in Bay Square. The fact that the water's going through Business Bay uh, makes it a real beautiful destination uh, because now yachts and boats and uh, even RTA's uh, water taxis can go through it, so you can literally get a nice little view of the entire business bay by catching a boat ride. And the new lifestyle is to come and live by the water where the business bay is being created in the heart of the city is something of a unique proposal where you can find uh, entertainment, 10 kilometers walkway around the water. I would definitely recommend seeing the waterfall at the Water Canal. It's 570 meters of beautiful cascading waterfalls. Definitely a must-see. In the very near future, you'll find people living on the water homes where they enjoy the waterfront in the heart of the city, where they can do business, enjoy lifestyle, and get the entertainment required. The word happiness is taken very seriously in Dubai. Since last year, the country even has a Minister of Happiness. Living a positive and healthy life are key words, and facilities are being set up accordingly. Jabal Ali was once known as a very industrial area, and now, today, it's known as the Entertainment District. Uh, one part, you have uh, the Dubai Parks, which is also separated into different areas like uh, Legoland, Bollywood, and Motion Gate. Also, if you like getting a great bargain, definitely check out the Outlet Village. There's a thing up there called Last Exit, which you'll see well developed, which is basically an exit off the main road, which is populated by food trucks. The Last Exit is pretty unique. You never really had food trucks in Dubai. We saw a couple of them pop up, and the next thing you know, we have uh, the last exit, which is, uh, it could be anywhere from 10 to 15 food trucks uh, serving foods from around the world. It's got a real cool style, you know, very American, uh, what you see on like Hollywood uh, movies, and it's, it's just all come to real life over there. It's open 24-7. It's definitely the place to kind of park your car, walk around, and grab a milkshake. Well, you can get everything and anything from hot dogs, burgers, falafel, seafood. And what's cool is that you can pick up your food and you can decide where you want to eat it. Stay in your car or maybe pop out and have it picnic style. What's so fascinating about Outlet Village is that you can pop in there, 
and you've got over a hundred different brands to choose from. So we're quite spoiled for choice. And these types of shoes and clothes and bags you can pick up for nearly half the price. The location, it's located between Dubai and Abu Dhabi, so we can attract both customers from the both main cities. They are coming mainly to check the high-end brands available here. Well, the architecture of the building is this Tuscan meets medieval concept. What makes uh, Dubai Park so special is that, first of all, it's three parks in one, so there's uh, something for everyone. Uh, one is Motion Gate, then you have Legoland, and you also have Bollywood. If you love Bollywood cinema, Bollywood Theme Park is definitely the place to check out. There are live shows with your favorite songs from back in the time to modern day, live dance shows, entertainments, and sometimes you actually might meet a Bollywood star. You don't have to have a theme park ticket to use the Riverland area. So all the sort of award-winning restaurants and the big name uh, chefs that have put their name to this whole new food and beverage and entertainment area called Riverland, which in itself is a theme park right in the middle of the resort, you can actually just go straight into there and enjoy the delights of that area. Are you visiting the UAE just briefly and want to avoid unexpected telephone bills when you get home? Buy a prepaid card with a data bundle. You can purchase them at the airport and pay only local rates with them. This way you will know exactly how much you're spending while staying connected. The reason why I visit Festival City is because it's another uh, you know, destination where you can just go there and spend the entire day there. There's a hotel there, there's a shopping mall there, and within the shopping mall as well, uh, it's got a seven-star cinema. I think Dubai Festival City has become really popular for IKEA. Also, if I want to pop in for some really good nachos, fries, and chicken wings, I always make sure to pop in at Hard Rock Cafe as well. One thing you have to check out if you're going to Dubai Festival City is Imagine. They have a laser show there. It's a must watch. Uh, also, waterfront uh, dining. And I believe also it's one of the best places in Dubai to get a sunset picture. Festival City is a great example of creekside living because you've got all the offerings of modernity through Festival City itself and the views over the creek to the traditional Dao building area of Al Jadaf. It's past meets, present meets, future, all incorporated in one area. Dubai Festival City is quite unique. It's a large mall, but it's really spacious. It's not overly crowded either. And I think around the evening times is probably my favorite time to pop in, just as the sun is setting. As a stylist, or when I'm bringing clients down here, one of my favorite things is the choice. You know, styling a client is everything from high-end to mid-brands to designers. It's having that flexibility of everything. So if you can go one place where it's all for me, it's perfect. If you've been to Singapore, you'll know of Robinson's. It's a fabulous department store, and it's open in Festival City, and it's the only one in Dubai. One of the biggest surprises is in Robinson's, for example, they have the delivery service, white glove delivery service, where everything's sent to me. I mean, what more could you want as a personal stylist? From the entertainment perspective in Dubai Festival City, I mean, we've got the cinema, Novo, love it. I mean, seven star experience. The seats are amazing and the food, the delivery, um, the choice of popcorn. I mean, I have a really sweet tooth. So for me, fantastic. Well, besides the state-of-the-art cinema that Dubai Festival City has, it has loads of other entertainment options too. Indoor theme parks, be it the kids' areas as well. It's got a little something for all the family. We have Fabiland. I mean, for big kids like myself, it's great. But also when I've got family visiting in town, I've got three nephews, they love it. Absolutely love it. Festival City is quite unique, you know, it's got a lot of outdoor terrace uh, restaurants so you can easily just sit out there, enjoy the most photographed sunsets. It's very picturesque. It's also where I can have my sex in the city moment with my red velvet cupcake from Magnolia. One of my pleasures. <laughs> One of the must-see features at the Dubai Festival City is Imagine. It's on the boardwalk, so after shopping, grab a seat at your favourite restaurant and watch the show. Seven elements, so much more than just laser, it's water, you have fire. I mean, it is a show like no other. 
So once you're done with your shopping, you've got the Intercontinental Hotel and the Crown Plaza literally walking distance from the shopping center. Well, the Intercontinental has some fantastic F&B choices. It really is a place where you can be there from day to night, from shopping to dining with the beautiful backdrop of the city view. They have great music, great food, and they also have a stunning view, so it's the perfect way to end the day. At one time, these were the main form of transportation in the desert. But even today, the camel is a much-loved animal. Camel races and camel polo are incredibly popular in Dubai. And what about a camel chino? Cappuccino made with camel milk. So don't forget to pick up your own special camel souvenir. Dubai Marina is one of the most cosmopolitan areas in Dubai. Uh, you know, the yachts, the boats, it's got a very sort of fancy, high-end, very luxurious type of a feel. And there's great restaurants that overlook all of these different yachts. In terms of location, 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 you couldn't really ask for better with access into the marina and all that has to offer, but also the thriving JBR area. You don't want to be driving along that particular walk area, but walking down the promenade, involve yourself in all the activities on the beach and of course the uh, various restaurant food and beverage options that you've got around there. You couldn't really ask for a better base. It's also a place to spot some beautiful cars because I think everyone who has a nice car tends to go down JBR and uh, you know be a little flashy. What makes the beach unique, it's really urban meets the city. So as you walk on the beach they have really sweet markets where you can meet local retailers selling crafts. Uh, if you want to work out, they have a gym located on the beach too. Uh, so it's, it's really a great place to experience the beach and beyond. Well, you'll find all sorts of different shops. You know, you can find sportswear, high-end designer wear, cocktail dresses, even glamorous ball gown dresses. It's such a perfect location with people coming in from all sorts of places. It's very diverse, very multicultural. If you're looking to watch a movie, there's the Roxy Cinema over there. And if you're a fan of football and Cristiano Ronaldo, the Real Madrid Cafe is the perfect place to check out too. The hotel is located in the heart of the Dubai Marina, compromising of 200 bedrooms and 442 beautiful residences all overlooking the marina. Of course, we have our five-star facilities like the all-day dining restaurant Mazina, our lobby lounge Kamba, our sports hub, Nezasasi Grill, and not to forget, we have our award-winning spa. The Address Marina Hotel is one of my favorite spas. It has the best hairdresser called Jacques Lecoupe, who does my hair. So if you're anything like me that now and again wants to escape the fast-paced, hustle-bustle city life of Dubai, I usually end up visiting Shades at Address Dubai Marina. They've got a beautiful, massive infinity pool that looks over the city life of Marina. For a five-star luxury experience in the heart of the Dubai Marina, directly connected to the Marina Mall, directly connected to Pier 7, and only a five-minute stroll away from the beach, I highly recommend you to address Dubai Marina. Pier 7 is a really unique concept. It's seven floors and on every floor there's a unique restaurant. A little bit of something from everyone, from international cuisine, Asian, fusion, it's Lebanese. Uh, it's definitely a place you can pretty much go every week to try a new place. Atelier uh, location is amazing. It's right on Dubai Marina. You have a beautiful lagoon and the ocean next to it. And you have a uh, almost 270 degree view from three floors. We have restaurant, one floor lounge, another floor, and we have an open rooftop. The Palm Jumeirah is, again, one of the most unique things in the world. So what they did is they took uh, the shape of a palm tree and they built uh, this huge island uh, but actually on the island, there's some amazing things to do, whether it's uh, the fact that you want to live there, stay at a hotel, uh, visit the Atlantis, you can swim with dolphins. 
And I just like the buzz on the palm. I like what's being achieved. I like the variety of choices there, uh, food, entertainment uh, and leisure. Um, and it's a good place. And it's one of those one places as well. Anytime I've got guests in town, what's their bucket list? What are the things I want to do? One of them is that I always want to go onto the palm. So it's nice to have options. Well, I've been trying really hard to, to improve my stand-up paddling and the palm is great for popping in there over the weekend, nice and early in the morning and, uh, and doing all sorts of water sports. You just have to look every morning, you know, you, see, you look at the, the sort of paddle boarding uh, and the weight boarding and, the, and, and the, the, the water sports enthusiasm that are taking place around there. So again, it's an environment along with uh, the weather that you get year round that encourages people to get out onto the water. I can tell you I've been a resident of the Palm Jumeirah for over 10 years and it's constantly changing and amazes me all the time. One of my favorite secrets, I'll tell you, is called Vista Mara. It's seven restaurants all on the beachfront. So for an affordable price, you can actually eat and enjoy the beach, dip your feet in right after you've had a nice meal. You can grab a burger at Breeze to having sushi and I definitely recommend Bin Bahar. It's an amazing fish restaurant. For first-time visitors coming to Dubai, I would recommend going to the airport early. You can have a relaxing journey. There's spas, amazing duty-free shopping, and there's live shows in the Zen Garden, which is in Concourse B. One thing that you could check out is uh, Music DXB, where they're putting on local artist performances. We play uh, in Dubai quite a bit, great music scene, and it's nice to bring a bit of the city into this fantastic airport. For me, I mean, really into my food. I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a foodie by admission. And the one thing that I really, really do like is the different options that you have there. You know, time is of the essence here. So we design the, the look and the feel of the dishes here to be able to, to produce them quickly, but without compromise on flavor or quality. And if you're into arts and creativity like myself, you'll find that there's all sorts of different paintings and artworks on display from Middle Eastern and international artists. Dubai has many different faces. Every neighborhood is unique. So there are many opportunities for you to create your own special experiences. It's a city that represents empowerment, it's inspiring. There is so much more that Dubai the Emirate can offer outside of the delights of the city. So the must-see is get out of the city limits and have a look at the whole Emirate. Well, my visitors always love quad biking in the desert. We hope to have inspired you and wish you a very pleasant stay. You know, for me, Dubai is home. It's the most amazing city in the world. Well, in case you're wondering who I am, I'm Anita. I'm a professional MC, presenter and blogger. My name's Tom Urquhart. I'm a journalist, presenter and broadcaster out here in the region. I'm Rosman Nathavji. I'm the founder of Rosman's World and RR & Co. Bespoke Luxury Management. Hey, what's up? If you're wondering who I am, my name is Marwan. I'm also known as DJ Bliss uh, here in Dubai. And if you want to find out a little bit more, you can always pop onto my website at hernameisanita.com. If you want to follow me, check out Instagram for all the best places to be in Dubai. Full of surprises. Full of surprises.